Now, a fight between two drunk men on board a Ryanair flight broke out en route from Edinburgh to Tenerife. Witnesses claiming the pair shouted and spat on each other during the brawl. Have a look at this. Well, it's been reported that the individuals involved shouted at anyone that tried to intervene. One passenger described it as the worst flight of their life. Oh, dear me. So we're asking this morning, should alcohol be banned at airports? Well, to debate this, we are joined by landlady Miranda Richardson and the co-founder of the social chain and six years sober, Dom McGregor. Very good to see you this morning, both of you. Uh, so, Dom, what do you make of this? Do you think airlines or airports should ban alcohol? I mean, if you look at those images, they're, you know, not very nice for the rest of the people on the plane. So you've got a very, very small majority of individuals who are in it for everyone. So you've got to look at it and say, OK, what's the common denominator of all these issues? And it's alcohol. So we have to look at solving the problem and the root cause, which is people drinking too much on planes. And that happens not on the plane because you might be on it for two hours. It happens at the airport where people are there for three, four hours beforehand loading up on drink. And we do know, Miranda, I mean, we've got to be honest about this. We know that happens. We know people are getting absolutely tanked up before they get on a plane. Um, so it, isn't this a sensible way to stop it? Absolutely. It, but it, it's going to be one of those things, you know, we all know once you go into an airport, you're kind of in, in, in no man's land. You know, you can buy whatever you like. You can shop for whatever you want. It's you know, almost 24 seven, nobody's paying attention. But it's things like, you know, quite often airports now have the weather spoons in them and everybody thinks it's great fun to play the weather spoons app. Oh, you know, send me what you want to my table. Take that away for one in airports. You don't need that. That's not an option. Uh, you know, part of my license as, as a publican, it's actually against the law and um, against my license to serve a drunk person. And, and that's an actual thing. And it, it sounds crazy because in a pub, you get used to many people having lots of drinks. But if you are knowingly serving somebody who is far too intoxicated, it actually violates your license. So a lot of that also then comes down to the training of the staff within the airports. But let's face it, they're there kind of three, four o'clock in the morning. They're not exactly going to be wildly excited to, to be turning people away at that time. So there has to be some sorts of regulations brought in. Certainly, you know, as they leave the, the, the airport and then they then join their flight, if you're on a two hour trip, you know, a short haul, you don't need alcohol on that plane. If you can't handle that for two hours, just you fly from one destination to another for two hours, you don't need it. So we shouldn't have to be selling it on those kind of planes. Uh -huh. So I think we, there are things that need to be looked at. There are things that need to be done. Um, and there, there are some, like I say, some, some small changes you can make um, to, to prevent that from happening. You know, awareness, um, certainly. Uh, and like I say, certain options of the, you know, order to table, um, those things need to change and go. But, Dom, who are we to tell people that they can't have a drink? I mean, people might have saved up for a holiday. They're looking forward to a weekend in Ibiza or whatever, and they want a gin and tonic at the airport. That's fair enough, isn't it? Surely this is about personal responsibility and not getting too smashed before you get on your flight. 100%. You know, the reason I'm sober is because I used to love drinking. So I'm, I understand exactly, you know, people's ability to be able to have choice. We're not talking about taking away the airport pint at the airport a couple of pints. What we're talking about here is people in public environments, which planes are, and a highly dangerous environment. You know, we've got Europe of 36,000 feet. So you're actually talking about people's safety here and you're talking about seeing fights that break out. So we're not talking about one or two drinks. We're talking about excess here. And I think what we have to look at is a ways to moderate people drinking a large amount in a short space of time, which is what people do. Uh, and this is then going on flights where you've got a change of altitude which Im impacts your, your blood and your, your brain and everything. So, yeah, we're not going to tell people stop drinking because that's not what anyone wants to hear and what's not going to happen. But there has to be a, look, uh, a solution that stops people drinking so much in such a short period of time before getting on a plane. Yeah. OK, Dom, Miranda, thanks very much indeed. All very sensible. I sort of think a, pro a decent answer would be being breathalyzed at the gate. Do you think? Yeah, because why can't they do that? Be very, and I'm not saying that you have to be like drink drive levels or anything else, but that just say you've not had more than four or five pints or something like that. Yeah. So at like a high level, 
or just say if you're over that, you don't get on the plane because then people would be very annoyed if they missed out on their flight. Yeah. So that would stop them. I know what you mean. I think people do, they, they take it too far, don't they, and things get out of hand. But I just don't think you should limit people if they're going away on their holidays. Mm.